And when he had his players come into the room for the first day of practice, he'd have them all sit on the floor, and he would teach them how to put their socks and shoes on. And when you have somebody named Bill Walton that thinks that you know, they're the best of the best of the best, and they are, and Coach Wooden tells him to take your shoes and socks off, I'm going to show you how to put them on the right way, he flipped out. And Coach Wooden said, look, this is a team effort. We win as a team. We don't win as an individual. We win as a team. And if each and every one of you here put your shoes on and, and, and your, 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 uh, your socks on the right way and stretch them to a maximum, number one, you're not going to end up any blis with any blisters. And number two, you're not going to end up with any ankle sprains. Because if you do, that hurts the team. So he said, what I'm going to do the first five weeks of practice is we're going to, going to teach you all the basics. And the most important thing I want to let you know is that I only have five offensive plays and five defensive plays. That's it. And some of the senior players were asked, is that true? And they said, that's true. We only have five offensive and five defensive plays. And you know something? Every other team in the country knew those offensive and defensive plays. But he started at the beginning of the year. They would take the ball. They would walk it over, give it to the next person, walk it down the court, give it to the next person, back and forth. And little by little, they did it faster and 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 faster till they did it so fast the other team knew what was coming and they couldn't stop it. They couldn't stop it on either end of the court. And that's what John Wooden made John Wooden the best and made his UCLA teams, even though he may not have had the talent of some of the other teams, that's why he always won. Because he always went back to basics. Here at Parker, I remember Dr. Jim, I was sitting in the front row, right here where this gentleman is, front row left, my first Parker seminar, and one of the things he said is always go back to basics. It's the basics that build your practice. You know, we can give you motivation, we can give you excitement, but you know, motivation is like a cappuccino. You drink it, you get a buzz, and a few minutes later you go to the bathroom, and what happens? You let it out. It goes right back down again. If you are just motivated this weekend and excited, what happens? is you go back to your office, your practice may go up because you're excited and motivated, but then little by little by little by little by little, what happens? You drop back down into your comfort zone and your practice goes right back to where it was before. The key is the action step. So this morning, what I wanna do in my 40 minutes is I want to inspire you. I want to inspire you to go back to the office and be better, be better at what you do. Be better at answering the telephone. Be better at processing your patients through your procedures. Be better with your scripts. Be better with your adjustment. Focus. Have present time consciousness, PTC. Be with that patient 100%, physically, mentally, and emotionally. Don't worry about the weekend. Don't worry about the vacation. Don't talk about anything except what's in your chiropractic plan for that patient. I had a, 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 patient, a, a doctor, a young doctor from, I think it was Alberta, come down before the Anaheim seminar and wanted to spend the morning in my office. And he said, can I follow you around? And I said, well, you know, I really can't have you follow me around. I'm too busy to introduce you to everybody and I don't want to, I don't want to seem like I'm, I'm cold shouldering you. But I said, stand outside the doors and listen to everything I say. And then we'll talk about it at lunchtime. And he did and he watched and he observed and he looked around the office and lunchtime came around. I said, what, what did you learn? And he said, you know what I learned? you say the same exact thing to every single patient. I go, duh, that's called scripting. That's what you do. Good morning, Mrs. Jones. Let's check your spine and see how you're doing today. I say that with every single patient. The only change is the name. Let's check your spine and see how you're doing today. I don't say, how's the pain? How's this? How's this? I know if they're hurting. I know if they're better or worse than the last time I saw them, but I never ask them how the pain is because I don't have a pain practice. I have a health and wellness practice. But when I see that patient walk in the door, I want to see that patient a lifetime. And not only them, but I want to see their spouse, I want to see their kids. And I have probably 10 families that I have two, three, four generations in my practice all at once. And once I had actually five. And the, the matriarch of the family was 93 when she came to see me, had been born in Indiana, had never been to a medical doctor, had never been on a medication. And when she came to my office, I examined her very thoroughly, I took x-rays of her spine, I did a dipstick urinalysis and she had a plus three sugar in her urine. So I sent her to my internist and I said, what do you think? And she says, you know, she's 93 years old, all her systems are working, all her organs are working. I don't know if she's gonna last six months, a year, two years maximum. You know, I'm not gonna give her any medication. Send her back to me. 
that lady passed away in her sleep at 102. Complete health, never had a drug in her body her entire life, and her four generations of her family are still under our care. So that's what I want to communicate with you today and explain to you how you can do this in your office. And you know, the funny thing is, if I can do it, you can do it. Uh, I, have, I have ADD, I have dyslexia, uh, I can't type, I can't, my hands don't work with my mind. If I don't use PowerPoint, I forget where I am sometimes in my talk. So I've got a lot of disabilities and yet I've become very successful because I felt that if, if someone else can do it, I can do it too. And I have always matched and mirrored the people that, that uh, excited me and mentored me and I knew I could do what they did and I actually did. Now, I want to just spend a little time talking about procedure because that's what I teach and this is the basics of what builds a successful practice. Yes, we want you to have the success consciousness, but it's the practice consciousness, the procedures, the scripts, the, your beliefs and what you do in your office. And I want to tell you something. Charles Duhigg wrote a book called The Power of Habit. And if you don't realize it, 48% of what you do in your entire day, you do by habit. You don't think about it. You only think about the other 52%. When you drive to the office, do you think about driving to the office? No, you don't think about driving to the office. You get in that car, and that car gets to the office. You don't think about it. But what you think about is what's on the radio, what's on your CD player, what's going to happen today. Your mind, your cortex is doing all the other things. But your limbic system is what's, what's responsible for your memory, and that is just working like automatic pilot. So what we do in our office is automatic pilot. So if you want to change something, you're going to have to take an action step to make a change to have you improve. So our Parker Professional Procedures, our purpose is to process patients effectively through office procedures designed for simplicity, speed, efficiency, to get patients to stay, to pay, to get well, to refer, to maintain, and to return when old and new conditions appear and reappear. Wouldn't you like that to happen to every single patient that you have? If that happened, you would be so busy, within six months you'd have to start hiring associates to take care of them, and you would just keep growing and growing and growing. And that's what happened in my practice. And the reason it happened in my practice is I already had the vision five years before I opened my practice. Because I graduated from chiropractic school, uh, I was a school teacher, I have a bachelor's and master's in education, and while I was teaching in upstate New York in the middle of January 1974, no, 72, I slipped and fell down a flight of stairs and I broke three vertebrae and herniated a disc. Next morning I ended up in the hospital and I ended up in a body brace from under my arms to my hips for about three months. And the doctors told me that I would be in a wheelchair by the time I was age 50. I was 22 years old at the time. And I tried everything. I went to the ortho, I went to the neuro. Physical therapy helped, but it only helped while I was on the table. And as soon as I got back up, I couldn't stand up. So my big problem was I couldn't stand erect, upright on my feet. Now my normal posture with my three compression fractures is this. But through chiropractic, keeping that spine moving and a good exercise program, I've retrained my body to regain my posture. If I can do it, anybody else can do it here. So I had a good belief system in chiropractic. But I want to tell you something. The first chiropractor I went to didn't do, do a good job. He had me fill out a little three by five card. He laid me on the table, no exam, no x-rays, and went pow, 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 down my back. And by the next morning, I was back like this and couldn't move. And I said, I will never go to another chiropractor. And so my mother looked at me and said, I told you to go see Dr. Kraft over in Ellenville. You didn't want to drive the 30 miles. You went to the guy down the street, and he, he has a very bad reputation, but he was close. So I proceeded a couple weeks later when I started feeling better to go to Dr. Richard Kraft in Ellenville, New York. The experience was entirely different. I walked into the office. His wife, Dale, greeted me. She said, are you Gene Orlowski? Are you Eddie and Ellie Orlowski's son? We're so happy to meet you. Please come over and sign in as you will on each visit. And this was, my, this was their office procedure. I filled out my forms and as I was sitting down writing everything out. I heard a big belly laugh in the back and that was Dr. Dick Kraft. And so I went back, had a consultation, a very thorough exam, and he said, you know, we need to get some x-rays of your spine. I don't have x-rays in the office. We're going to send you to Ellenville Hospital right next door to get your films. And I will meet with you tomorrow. We'll give you a report of findings and review what's going on. And Dick Kraft was the first person that gave me hope. 
He, and when, as soon as I walked in the office for my report of findings, he said, Gene, we can help you. It's going to take time. You're going to need to spend about six months of active care with me, but we're going to heal your spine. You're young. You're in good shape. We're going to get you well. And I believed him because he had an innate to innate communication from the sender to the receiver, from the doctor to the patient that let me know in my heart I knew he could help me. And six months later, I was back on my feet. I was functioning. It was all cash, three times a week for two months, two times a week for two months, one time a week for two months. I don't remember how much it cost, and I don't care. He gave me my health back. And then he said, why don't you go back to school and become a chiropractor? And that's why I'm here today. I graduated school. Thank you. I graduated school in 1980. I wanted to be successful. I was already successful in a restaurant business. I was a successful teacher. I wanted to be successful. And so what I did is found the most successful chiropractor in California to associate with. And at the time, that was Dr. John Thee, had the largest chiropractic clinic. We had 11 associates. We had 34 assistants. On an average day, we saw 400 visits a day, and we averaged 20 new patients a day. Not a week, a day. So that's the clinic that I worked for five years before I opened my own practice. But I matched and mirrored everything he did. And on a Perceptor program, in the first three months, I saw 100 visits a week on a Perceptor program. In my first week of practice, I saw 125 visits. I collected $16,000 my first month. And I made 25% of that was mine. So I made 1,000 a week. And that was on $20 a visit. So it can be done. And you can build the practice of your dreams very quickly. John trained me, and I, I matched and mirrored everything he did, and that's what made me successful. So what I want to do is share, because he was on this program for 18 years. I didn't know that at the time. And he was one of Dr. Parker's original Parker pals. And my class of pals was the last group of Parker pals before Dr. Jim passed away in 1997. So one of the things that he assigned me to do is to keep these principles and procedures going to the next generation. And now I'm teaching them to still the next generation. So let's talk about your practice. There's five important statistics in practice. These are the most important five. I can look at these, and I can tell the health of your practice very, very quickly. The first is new patients. Does everybody here want more new patients? Great. The second is patient office visits. This is the most important one because this is where you make 90% of the money in your office is on your patient visits. So we need to work on getting those patient visits up. We have to know what the charges are for the day. And we also have to know what the collections are because it's the collections that's going to determine what's going on. And I like the 90% rule. I give about 10% away in our practice. But I like the 90% rule, so I want to collect 90%. And the fifth, which actually gauges the health of your practice, is your patient visit average. And that is our theme for today. Now, your patient visit average is the number of patient visits divided by the number of new patients. And this is in the course of a month. So you take the number of patients, new patients you have for the month, the number of office visits, and divide it, and you'll get what we call your PVA. And this is the most effective statistic to gauge the health of your practice. Now, let's take a look at PVAs. Uh, Rob started talking a little bit about it earlier as he introduced me. But if you have a PVA of 12 or less, what that really means is you have a pain relief practice. When the pain's gone, the patient's gone. And so often, people will give their report of findings just for the pain relief care, and then try to sell them on another part of care after they're finished with their initial care. And when you have to sell them in piecework, it doesn't work. You have to sell them up front. You have to explain the whole program and what, what your purpose is right from the start. If you have a PVA between 12 and 20, what it says is you have a weak report of findings. How many here do a written report of findings? OK, I didn't see a lot of hands go up. One of the most important things you can do to improve your credibility is to give a written report that's prepared in advance. And every word that you're going to say with that patient is scripted and prepared ahead of time. Because what that does is gives you confidence. And the patient sees confidence. They want to know to go to a doctor that shows confidence. If you have a practice between 20 and 30, what that means is that you have a rehabilitative practice. You probably get them out of pain and keep them a little bit longer so that they have a chance of actually healing up. And if you have a PVA of 40 or above, that is where we want you because that's a true health and wellness practice. 
and that's where we want you to go because chiropractic should be the leader in health and wellness. We're not sickness and disease. We're not in that paradigm. You know, medicine is gonna kill itself because it's in the sickness and disease paradigm. And it's not driven by doctors or the medical schools. It's driven by the pharmaceutical profession and the medical technology profession that wants all these expensive technologies in the hospital. Do you know medicine is the only area of our economy that technology has caused prices to go up rather than go down? Every other place they've gone down. I just put the top of the line digital x-ray in our office. It's better than most hospitals. And the interesting thing is, when I looked at it two years ago, it was $129,000. And when I finally put it in my office, it was $68,000. It had dropped half in two years because technology improved. But if you look at medical care itself, what happens? We ha we're all using MRI now. Everybody wants an MRI. You walk in here, a little back pain, I want an MRI. So why would you want an MRI? It's $2,500. In $2,500 care, I can treat you for five months. You can be in my office 40 times. Why would you want to go get an MRI and use up all your insurance benefits and you don't have radiating pain, you don't have any of the medical indicators of having an MRI? Let's give it six weeks of care and see how it does, okay? So it, it's amazing the way medical technology has caused the price of medicine to go up. And we are the most effective healthcare there is, believe me. So my goal for you is to do three things. One, get more new patients. And I'm gonna show you how we have a referral practice. Uh, it, it's funny, listening to Jason, we just had an interesting thing. I had 1,297 hits on our Facebook for one picture that we put in uh, about three weeks ago, and I'll share that with you at the end of our talk. But 95% of my patients come by referral. And the, way, the reason I get 95% by referral is I ASK to GET. If you don't ask, you don't get. And I'm gonna show you how to do that very easily. So all the procedures that I'm gonna talk about today are gonna do one thing. They're gonna improve your number of new patients and they're gonna improve your PVA. So, we wanna build a health and wellness practice is the third goal. Now, I'm gonna talk about the disease that almost every single practice here has. And it's called the leaky bucket syndrome. If you don't constantly keep putting new patients into the top, what happens to the practice level? It leaks out the bottom and it keeps going down. So the focus of almost everybody that I see out there when I teach is how do I get more patients? How do I get new more patients? I said, it's not how to get more new patients, it's how to keep your patients. When you know how to keep your patients, you're not gonna ever have to worry about new patients again. And they will come to you by referral if you just use some very simple in-house referral skills. And that's what I wanna give you today. The first thing I wanna talk about is purpose though, because it's all about headspace, like we said yesterday. It's also about headspace in your office. What, do you, what is chiropractic to you? You know, chiropractic saved my life, gave me my health back, and you know, I'm, I'm healthier than I've ever been. I just went from a medical physical last year, I was 64 years old, and my doctor said, I can't believe it, you're healthier than most 30 year olds I see. And why is that? Because I live the chiropractic lifestyle. I do and I live my talk. This is what I do at home, I do at the office, wherever I am, I do the same thing, whether I'm out, it's always the same. And Dr. Jim taught me 40 years ago, Purpose of chiropractic, relieve pain, restore health, prolong life. Now we can modify that a little bit. We're still gonna relieve pain, we still wanna restore health, but now we wanna prolong health and wellness is the new keywords for the new millennium. But that's what we wanna do. Isn't that what each and every one of you wanna do in your practice? You wanna improve the health of your community. And I want each and every one of you to be the health and wellness specialist in your community, because doctors aren't. The research shows it, they're not trained. Doctors don't know anything about health and wellness. Clinics don't know anything about health and wellness. Hospitals don't know anything about health and wellness. They're trained in sickness, disease, and emergency medicine. And they're great at what they do. But you wanna know something? I have a truckload of MDs in my office because I simply explained that. I said, you take care of the sickness and disease, I do the health and wellness. And the patient does need most, most, both. Occasionally they need to go to the doctor for something. But it's usually an emergency. But if you follow this very simple principle and follow this as your motto and your purpose for practicing, you will never be without patients. Wherever you are, there's always encouragement. There's always people that need you. When I go out to lunch with my son, he'll look and he said, oh my God, look at that forward head posture. Look at that guy, he's got spinal stenosis. Look at that guy with the bad hip. You know, those are all chiropractic cases. But are you gonna say something about it? You know, do you have the guts to get up and give him a card and say, hey, you know, I'm watching how you walk. I can help you with that. 
come in, we'll give you a complimentary spinal screening and see if you, can, you are a chiropractic case. How many of you will get up and do that? I do that all the time, and I've been doing it for, it's, and that is my habit. And so that's what I want you to do, is to start developing different habits and new habits. Now, there's four types of care we do in the office. We do acute care, we do rehabilitative or corrective care, we do supportive care, those are for the degenerative disc and the spinal stenosis and those phase two and three spines, that the most important thing we can do is keep that spine moving. You know, I talk subluxation in my office, but I talk mostly movement. People understand movement. If the spine is moving, movement is health. If your circulation is moving, you're healthy. If your spine is moving, you're healthy. If your nervous system is flowing properly, you're healthy. And, and you heard uh, uh, Dr. John talk yesterday about how, how important adjusting the spine is for affecting the brain. Because the three systems that we affect most as chiropractors, the nervous system, the immune system, and the, uh, what's the other one? The hormonal system. Those three are affected by chiropractic more than anything else. And when you realize that, when you give an adjustment, it's not just putting a bone back in place, it's not just relieving the pinched nerve, but it's stimulating that nervous system. And one of the things that I teach my patients in our spinal care class is what we call the four essentials of life. And we tell patients, there's four essentials of life. Do you know what they are? And of course, somebody will go, well, uh, it's got to be food. And I said, that's correct, food. But you can live 30 days without food. Is there anything else? And they said, water. Well, how long can you live without water? You can live without water for about seven days. Is there anything else? And they start thinking a little bit more and a little bit more. And all of a sudden they go, oxygen. Yes, oxygen. How long can you live without oxygen? About three minutes. And what's the last one? And they kind of ponder it a little bit and ponder it a little bit. And somebody will finally say, nerve supply. And I go, bingo, nerve supply. You cannot live one single second without nerve supply. That is why chiropractic is so important. Chiropractic is the foundation of health and wellness. If you don't have good pops, posture and a properly functioning spine and nervous system, you're never going to have health. You can add exercise, you can add nutrition, you can add rest, you can add positive attitude, you can add all these things that we know help people to live a better, healthy life. But if they don't have nerve supply, they don't live at all. That is why we are so powerful. Do you understand that? It's so important. You need to know that. I just wanted to show you one thing about this picture, if I can get it back. I don't, yeah. This picture actually was uh, an interesting picture. This is me in uh, 2001. And uh, this picture happens to be taken at St. Paul's Chapel at Ground Zero. And uh, St. Paul's Chapel was right next to Tower 2. And Tower 2 came down, and not even a grave was shaken out in the graveyard. And that graveyard, this is the oldest building in New York City. It was George Washington had his inauguration at this church, at St. Paul's Chapel. On the other side was Tower 1, and when Tower 1 came down, uh, the, the Greek Orthodox Church was so destroyed, they couldn't find a single piece of the church. And on this side, the tower came down and let it go. It's New York's oldest building. But I had the opportunity to work there for four nights. I saw over 400 visits. I didn't do a consultation. I didn't do an exam. I, all I did was just love the people and adjust them for four days. And it was probably one of the most mountaintop experiences of my life. So let's talk about procedure and how it relates to PVA. You know, our Parker procedures, we have, we have several basic procedures. We have our first visit, which is very important. It needs to be choreographed. It needs to be scripted. And we'll, we'll just explain a little bit of it today as we go. And uh, the report of findings, we have a spinal care workshop. We have regular patient visit procedure, which you should do on every patient visit. The first thing I do with an associate is I teach him the 10 uh, steps to a successful office visit, and including the script. And we script, if you walk into one of my associate's offices and listen to what he says to the patient, he says exactly the same thing as me. We're very well scripted. We have our progress reports. You have to give progress reports. It's like the report card. You need to let know people how they're doing. How they, are they following through with care? Are they doing the exercises? How's their spine doing? Where are they in their progress? And the last thing is retention. And again, retention is the most important thing of plugging that leaky bucket and keeping your practice healthy. We have three types of patients. We have those who want pain relief. We want those that want restoration of health. And we want those who want to prolong lives. How many of you had patients walk in and say, you know, I just want to be healthy and well, and I want to come a lifetime? How many of you had? 
I've had probably three in 30 years of practice, and usually they've come from other chiropractors that are health and wellness chiropractors. Most people want to come in, they want one visit, they don't want to come back, and they want it for free. So it's our procedures that educates patients right from the telephone to tell a friend. So 80% of the people you see are just going to want pain relief, but your procedures will convert them. So our, so our procedure is designed to make you a doctor of chronic. And 90% of what we see in the office are not new and acute conditions, even if they come in not able to move and they bent over yesterday. When you examine them thoroughly and x-ray their spines, you're going to find most of them are exacerbations of chronic conditions. And they're not going to go away in 12 visits. They're going to need some regular care. You see, chiropractic is a process. It's not a quick fix. Chiropractic is like orthodontia is to the teeth. And when you explain that to patients, they get it very easily. You know, our new patient procedure is basic Parker procedure. It's 80% it's Parker and it's 20% Orlowski because I've revised it to make it work for me. But we still do the pre-admission consultation and preliminary exam. We do the examination, we do the report of findings, and we find out where the problem is, we find out what it is, and what has to be done with it, and can we help the patient. Our basic procedure is very simple. It's a two-day procedure. We, on the first day, we do our new patient interview, a preliminary exam to touch pain parts, and that lets them know that they need to go in and get a thorough examination and x-rays of their spine. We do a release that day. We don't treat on the first visit. You should never treat on the first visit. Actually, you should never treat till you give a report of findings because you need to tell that patient what to expect. And if you don't do that, that's when you can't undo the patient the next day when they come in and say, you know, you, know, you killed me yesterday, and now you have to give a report of findings, and they can't move. You can't do that. And don't be in such a hurry to adjust an acute patient because there's muscle splinting, there's swelling, there's venous congestion, and you put them in a side posture and rack them, and sometimes they'll end up in a hospital. So don't be in such a hurry to get in there and, and do that, that uh, million dollar roll, okay? We do a thorough chiropractic orthopedic exam, and in my community, we are known to be thorough. When we have referrals from the hospital, we have referrals, we do EHR notes, we send a letter and we send the EHR note to the referral doctor. And when they look at what we do, they go, holy mackerel, these guys are really up to date. And we'll send them a, a, a file of the digital x-ray if they want it. And so everything is there, and they go, holy mackerel, these guys really know what they're doing. We are thorough, and we have the reputation in our community of being thorough. Our basic day two, we do our report of findings. We give our first corrective adjustment, our multiple appointment, and we schedule for spinal care class. How many do spinal care class? If you don't, that is the absolute best way to get new patients and get families into your office. Because I invite families to come to our spinal care class. I make it kid friendly, and we not only teach the person that's in pain, but we teach the person that they need health and wellness, and their, their kids need to be adjusted a lifetime. We take control of the patient right from when they come in. We, sh we show them how to sign in. We show them how to, to move to the new patient seat. We have them see a video. We pre-frame what we're going to do so when we do it, they already know what we're going to do. And we give everything prepared in advance. When a patient calls on the phone, everything is already filled out. We check it out, and then we can just take that and put it right into the computer. It makes it really, really easy. We do our new patient interview. We take a history, which is not the most important reason you're doing it. You can read all the stuff that they wrote down now that these computer forms are so thorough. But we want to establish rapport because if you don't establish rapport, the patient's not going to stay with you. They have to know that you're the office and you're the doctor for them. And you need to plant a referral concept. Whom referred you to our office? And I already know in advance because they've written it down. And I'll come in and say, hey, I see Jim Galbraith referred you to our office. That's terrific. How do you know Jim? And he says, oh, we're good friends. I said, well, we take care of his whole family. We've taken care of him for 30 years. And they're like, oh, my God. And, and, and the first thing they'll say is, he's not that acute, is he? And I said, no. He says, he's a health and wellness patient. And they're like, oh. So what are we starting to talk right from the beginning? Health and wellness, health and wellness, health and wellness. And we also determine if they're a chiropractic case. We do a thorough exam. We determine the cause of the problem, how long it's going to take to get well. Doing a thorough exam just seeds that doctor-patient relationship. That's where you get them. That's where that rapport really comes in. And again, we want you to have present time consciousness, PTC. It gives, you, it, it gives confidence in the doctor, and it also gives you valuable feedback on the patient. And when you say to a patient, how long have you had this? Oh, I've had this for, I've got on and off for 30 years. Now, do you think 12 visits are going to fix this person? You know? 
And you don't need to see them three times a week if, if, unless they're acute. You don't, I start most of my patients at twice a week, once a week, or every two weeks if they're health and wellness patients. I just get that spine moving and then move them to their wellness program. And I make it easy, I make it, I make it affordable, and we have the highest rates in the area, and we have the busiest practice. Second visit, we do our report of findings. We schedule our patients. We use a multiple appointment. We do our first adjustment. We schedule for spinal care class, and we call the patient after the first visit. How many of you call after the first adjustment? And you don't call and say, you know, I just called to see how your pain is. You call and say, Mrs. Mrs. Jones, this is Dr. Olowski. I just called to check on you and see if you had any questions after today's visit. If they're hurting, they'll tell you, and then I ask them if they're doing the first aid that I recommended for them, and I'll say, see you tomorrow for your report of findings. That's it, the 30-second call. And I remember doing that with a nine-year-old girl with acute torticollis, could hardly move, and I called her that night, and I, and I said, uh, I said, Mrs. Simmons, can I speak to Rosemary? And, and I said, this is Dr. Olowski, and she goes, sure. So Rosemary picks up the phone and goes, hello. And I said, hi, Rosemary, this is Dr. Olowski. I just called to check on you. I, I called to check and see if you're using your ice and if you're laying down. She goes, I'm resting, I'm using the ice, and I'm feeling a lot better. And she came in the, the next morning with her, from her head like this to over here. It took me another couple of visits to get it moving. She became a health and wellness patient. She didn't need active, regular, acute chiropractic care. She immediately went from acute care to health and wellness. Give the patients what they need, not what you need. But her mother sent me more people and told that story to every one of her friends that, that all the kids go together. And that's how it works. Six points of report of findings. You, want, you don't need to spend a half hour, 45 minutes. And I, I love new associates. They go in there and I go, I go, where's Dr. Mike? He says, he's still with the patient. I go, it's an hour and a half. What's he doing in there? You know? And I, I said, no, no, no. We train him. Seven to 10 minutes is all you need. And all you do is answer six questions. Now, in our office, we have a multi-doctor office. We're very busy. We have a financial CA. So the doctor does one, two, three, and four. We tell them what's wrong. We tell them if chiropractic can help, how long it's going to take, how often they need to come in. And I always give a recommendation based on, they threw me off here by putting a time here. They give me a rec we, I give a recommendation. Uh, see, I lost my train of thought. I'll be back. All right. The recommendation is not made on number of visits because we never know how long it takes for a patient to get well. So our recommendation has to be on a time period. And most of my time periods are recommended based on whether they're phase one, phase two, or phase three spinal degeneration. If they're, phase, if they're in early phase one, it may take two to four months of active care. If they're, phase two, if, they're, if they're a late phase one, then it may take three to six months. If they're a phase two, early phase two, three to six months, late phase two, six to nine months. And if they're a phase three, it may take anywhere from nine to 24 months of active care. That's at least once a week. So, so we know exactly what we're gonna tell the patient before the patient comes in based on their history, based on their exam, based on their x-ray findings. And then our CA will come in and tell them how much it costs and how they have to pay for it. Now they already know that. You have referrals, the referral has already told them how much it costs, they've already told you what you're gonna do, you're gonna examine them, you're gonna extra them, they already know. Your job is not to screw it up. Your job is just to do your procedure because that's their expectation in your office. And if you do their expectation, it's gonna work out tremendous to you. Multiple appointment schedule. How many of you put your patients on maps? Okay, you will increase, if, this is, if the only thing you do Monday morning is to go back and start using maps with every single one of your patients, you will increase your PVA 20% without one single extra new patient because you'll start getting better control of your patients. We schedule 16 to 12 visits at a time. If it's three times a week, that's a month. If it's twice a week, it's six to eight weeks. If it's once a week, it's 90 days. If it's every two weeks, it's six months. But we always do a re-exam because it brings us back into present time consciousness with that patient. And the patient that you forget about is the patient that's well, that you stop focusing on the health and you start focusing on the ball game and everything else. And they go, well, he didn't ask me about my health. He asked me about the ball game. I don't need to go in anymore. I feel good. Boom, they're gone. And then trying to get them back is very difficult. So we get better follow through when we, when we, when we map them and we have better patient control. Spinal care workshop. 
You know, two weeks ago, I, it was my turn to do spinal care workshop. I had one person in my class. I've had as little as one. I've had as many as 18. And I had one person. Guess how many new patients I got out of that? Four new patients. Because he brought in his, his, his wife. His brother-in-law came in. And I screened two kids. Four new patients out of that. And in my office, I don't know about you, but in my office, I know for a fact a new patient is worth $4,500. Now, do you think it was important for me to spend, and my class is only 25 minutes long, sitting one-on-one -on -one, because it was one person. So I, I, I sat on my coffee table with my spine and gave spinal care class. I didn't use the PowerPoint. I didn't use all the stuff we normally do. But I just talked to her one-on-one -on, -one on getting the family in, and we did. And so was that 20 minutes of free time valuable? In the long run for the practice, that's going to be worth $16,000. So do spinal care class. Ask and you get. It's an opportunity to ask people in the synergy of a group to bring their family in, bring their friends for a spinal checkup. They may not have back pain, but bring them in for a checkup. Check their spine, check the mobility, check the function, check their short leg, check their kinesiological exam to see how their muscles are working, check their balance. It takes five minutes to do a spinal screening on someone and determine whether they really have something we need to take care of. But that's what we need to do, and that's how we need to work. Now, how about recall? Does anybody here have a recall system in their office? Again, you want to improve your PVA 20%, activate a recall system. We have short-term and long-term recall. Our short-term begins 20 minutes after a patient misses an appointment. They're called immediately. If we don't get them on the phone, on the answering machine, we reschedule their appointment to the next day. Do you think they call back? Always. Because if they can't do it, they go, oh my god, he scheduled me for tomorrow. We schedule it at the same time tomorrow. Boom. They'll call back. We call three times. We have a three-call procedure. The first two calls are by the CA. The third call is by the doctor himself. Mrs. Jones, I'm concerned about you. You haven't been here for your appointments. We're just worried about you. Please give me a call and let me know how you're doing. And it lets me reestablish rapport and re-communicate with a patient if possible. And in our long term, we have our general reminders. We have our recall cards, our birthday cards. We have a great newsletter that goes out every quarter. And if you want our geochiropractic uh, Facebook, look it up. We have an a, a amazing number of likes. We get hits all the time. It's, it's fabulous. And we update it all the time. And number three is my good friend Pat Atanas, who is probably one of the best CA trainers in the country. She's practiced in, in she, she was Larry Markson's CA when he started his office the first 13 years and became one of the best CA trainers in the country. She travels all over the world. And her acronym is MUMS the Word. And that is make up missers. And it's the doctor's job to get on patients when they start missing their appointments. I just stop everything I'm doing. I said, Mrs. Jones, I scheduled you three times a week. You've been only here twice a week for the last two weeks. Do you know what that means? You're missing one third of your care. That means it's going to take a lot longer and you're not going to get the, the results that we think you're going to get. So you need to be in here regular. Will you make that, will you recommit and make that? And they'll usually say certainly. And we'll either make it up that week, or if we can't do that, if they're an active patient, we make it up on the end of their schedule. But make up missers, it will improve your PVA another 20% without getting any more new patients. Now, how many times did I say it will improve 20% without getting an, an additional new patient? I said it three times. That's how important procedure is for plugging your leaky bucket. And that's what you need to do. And see, our goal, ladies and gentlemen, is to develop what Dr. Jim Parker called the complete patient. The complete, the complete patient is your salesperson out in the community talking about you, getting it excited. And you know something? It's not patients that get well that are your best referrals. It is your patients that are inspired and enthusiastic. Those are your best referrals. So get people fired up in your office. Get them inspired. Get them excited. And if you do, you will build a tremendous practice and you will tremendously improve your PVA. You know, my practice is a health and wellness practice. I've been there 35 years. And on Wednesday, I had five people that have been with me for 30 years come in for their wellness adjustment. And most of them, because now they're getting up in age, their wellness adjustment is every two weeks. They can't go a month. They come in every two weeks. And they're healthy. They're well. They, they're not hospitalized. They live on their own. They drive their own cars. They do everything. They're ambulatory. It's everything that chiropractic can do for people when you see them on a lifetime basis. And I just want to share one of my patients with you. Uh, Mike, play the uh, video, please. 
And this is a cute little lady, one of our, one of our patients. Now, she's wearing stripes. I want you to look at her alignment. I want you to look at her posture from front to back. I want you to look how she's moving. And there's a, vi there, there's, there's, there's a sound bite that goes with it, but you don't want to hear it. It's really funny. But she can move. How old do you think this lady is? 93. Anybody else? Go up. 90. Somebody knows. She is 102. Now, this is what 102 should look like right here. And I introduce her to every patient in the office when she's there. And she'll be there about 45 minutes because she gets her adjustment and loves to sit out and have a cup of tea and hang out. And her 75-year-old daughter looks 50. But they have had regular chiropractic care for, she has had regular chiropractic care for 70 years. And the funny thing is, when she came to our, our office and we started taking care of her, she's been our patient for seven years, she said, you know, I'm sure glad you people are young. And she looked at me and said I was young. She goes, my last six chiropractors died. I've outlived them. <laughs> but she knows the power of chiropractic. That's why I do what I do. That's why I come here to encourage you. You know, a candle loses nothing by lighting other candles. If I can light your candle, if I can get you excited, if I can get you wanting to go back to your office and have more passion and more excitement, I've done my job. And not only have I seen my patients in my office, but I've done my duty to humanity. And my purpose in life has always been to serve God by serving man through chiropractic. Whether it's in the office, whether it's on the stage, I never take a penny for speaking at a chiropractic conference. Wherever I go, wherever they call me to go, I go because it's important to motivate you. So my charge for you is Monday morning is to take an action step. Write some of this stuff down. If you don't have it, go out to Parker. I'll be out there. We have workbooks. We have report of finding scripts. We have everything you need to be better in practice. But you need to have the principles. You need to have the philosophy. And you have to have the procedures. So I hope this was beneficial for you. I've enjoyed doing it. I love being with you. And I'm going to hang with you the rest of the weekend. Thank you very much. Thank you.